Why the ukulele introduction, what's that got to do with the subject? Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with the ukulele, but you know, I think the music sounds nice, so that's why I like to put it in. So what is it this week, Giles? The subject this week, it's Twitter. Yeah, good Twitter accounts to follow. That's what I'm doing this week. Look what I've got. Do you know what that is? Do you? Thank you for watching. Today I wanted to talk about Twitter. Now I must be very stupid because it took me ages to realize what a useful and fabulous resource Twitter was for learning Python and data science and computer science and those subjects. And I'm sure it's for, good for learning most subjects. And there are so many interesting people that share so much useful knowledge and learning resources. And today I want to share with you some of the accounts that I follow that I found really helpful. So I'm going to share with you my favorite thousand Twitter accounts. No, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to share 10 Twitter accounts. I'm not saying that these are the best 10 Twitter accounts that you should be following. These are Twitter accounts that you might not be aware of and that I think will teach you a lot if you follow them consistently and, and read their tweets consistently. Um, they'll teach you a lot about Python and about data science. So let's take a look. Username at Kirk D. Bourne. It's Kirk Bourne. He's the principal data scientist at Booz Allen. And what I really like about this Twitter account is the number of learning resources that he links to. Most of them that he links to are free. Um, and that's one of my favorite aspects of this account. He also links to uh, other resources, articles that give nice sort of insight and overview of data science. What's happening with your upload schedule at the moment? Yeah, the upload schedule has gone a bit haywire over the last few weeks because I normally like to upload on a Thursday, but you know, it's the school holidays and uh, I work from home and the children have been around and that sort of disrupted my uh, my upload schedule and my work schedule really. So that's why it's been chopping and changing quite a bit over the last few weeks, but it, hopefully it'll be going back to, to Thursdays soon. The main reason I follow him is for all of the great learning resources that you will find. His Twitter feed's great, I love it, go and follow it. Number two is Andrew Trask, he's at I am Trask on Twitter. He is the leader of Open Mind, he's a senior research scientist at DeepMind and a PhD student at uh, the University of Oxford. He has also uh, written a book on deep learning which I haven't read but I'm sure is very good. Um, I really like Andrew's Twitter feed um, for several reasons. The first reason is that he shares a lot of resources, um, normally things like uh, links to GitHub uh, pages that have lots of useful learning resources on them. He is very active in the sort of learning code um, Twitter hashtag and is often tweeting about that uh, and uh, offering resources and tips on how to learn to code. So that's very useful as well. And he clearly wants to encourage as many people as possible, or certainly as many people that want to, um, to enter the field of machine learning and AI. Um, so I think you'll find his tweets and his Twitter feed not only useful in terms of the resources, but it's quite inspiring as well. Um, so at number two, go and follow Andrew Trask. Number three comes Jan LeCun. Now, I've told you that this is in no particular order, and uh, you can see that that's the case, because Jan LeCun is one of the leading researchers in the field of AI. Um, if you look at his Twitter bio, there is nothing there. And really there's nothing there because he doesn't need any introduction in the world of AI. If you have a look at his homepage, you see that he's VP and Chief AI Scientist at Facebook. Um, and he's won all sorts of awards in this field. He's a very influential person in the world of AI research. Um, and for that reason alone, you should be following him. But also he gives his insights and shares his insights on his Twitter feed. And he links a lot to research, uh, you know, cutting edge research in the field of AI. So he is definitely someone that you need to be following. So go and follow him. The next person that you must follow in this field of AI is Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton is famous for his work on deep learning. Jeffrey Hinton really is an incredible man. He is regarded by many as the godfather of deep learning and he was researching into deep learning and artificial neural networks 
long before uh, it was popular. You know, he's been doing it for many, many years. So he really was a pioneer in this field. Um, and he doesn't tweet much. I think he's only tweeted 47 times, but he's such an important person in this field that you really wouldn't want to risk missing a tweet from him. So uh, go and follow him too. At five is DeepMind. Um, DeepMind are doing lots of work in applying AI to real world situations. They do a lot of work in healthcare. And of course, they're really famous for creating AlphaGo, which beat the Go world champion a few years ago. They tend to link to a lot of their own research, but they also retweet um, a lot of the work of, uh, you know, their researchers who have very interesting views and insights on what's going on uh, in this field in general. So I definitely recommend that you follow them. The next account is an account that doesn't tweet very often, but um, I find it a really useful resource. So this is Papers with Code. How do you try to learn this stuff. Do you find it easy? Well, just it takes time, you know, stick at it. Do a little bit each day. That's definitely my philosophy for everything. You can learn anything by just by just doing it 10 minutes a day. And, and that's really important. The If you're too ambitious to begin with, then I think you don't live up to those expectations and you give up. Whereas if you just say, all I want to do is do 10 minutes a day or 30 minutes or however long and stick to that. That process will eventually get you where you want to be. And um, well, the way they describe themselves is a free resource for researchers and practitioners to find and follow the latest state of the art ML papers and code. Now, most of their interesting stuff is actually on their website, but I still think their Twitter feed is worth following. Um, and they link to research papers that contain the computer code um, for the research that they've done. So it enables anyone to try to replicate what they've done. Um, and that's a really great learning resource. So definitely take a look at that. The next account that I think you should follow is Vicky Boykis. Now, Vicky Boykis is, um, she works in data science and uh, she has a blog and she tweets uh, links to her blog, but she tweets a lot about what it's like working in data science and the challenges of being in that field. what she likes about that field and what she thinks needs to change. And she also tweets learning resources every now and then. So go and follow her. Data Science Weekly, which is at Data Science News, is um, an incredibly useful resource. It uh, They have a weekly uh, newsletter, which I suggest you subscribe to. And they just share lots of resources about data science, about how to get a data science job, about how to study data science, about what's going on um, in the data science world and the issues that it's facing. They also retweet a lot of content from other data science influencers. And so you get a good overview of the data science world by following this account. Data Science Rene with the Twitter handle at Becoming Data Sci is a really great Twitter feed for anyone that wants to change careers, uh, you know, to data science or wants to break into the field of data science. Um, she is the host and the creator of uh, the podcast Becoming a Data Scientist. She is a data scientist at Helio Campus. Um, there's just loads and loads of very useful information there. There are her thoughts on data science and how to get into data science. She also shares uh, resources and advice from other data scientists on how to do it. Um, and she's got a very good website as well, which is linked to in her Twitter feed. So if this is a field that you're not yet in, um, that you'd like to be a part of, uh, then definitely you must follow this Twitter account. Data Science Rene. And finally, there's Chris Auburn. Now, I first found out about Chris when uh, I stumbled upon his website. He has a great website that uh, has loads of resources for Python and data science. Um, he used to do a podcast, but I don't think he's done one recently. Now, he tweets an awful lot. His feed isn't just data science. He, you know, he talks about his political views and his personal views about things. But there is a lot of data science in there. Um, and, uh, you know, he's clearly someone that knows what he's talking about and um, that I think, you know, you could learn a lot from. So I would definitely recommend that you follow him. So if you had to just pick one of these accounts, which one would you pick? If I had to just pick one of these accounts, I think it would be Kirk. 
Kirk Bourne because he gives so many links to resources that I find really, really useful. 